In order to get into Cambridge, you need to take an exam with lots of multiple choice questions and very little time to tackle them. And let's have a look at the last one of them. Please choose an answer now. So we have this circuit with internal resistance R that depends on the current with this expression. We also have a variable resistor and we need to find R in terms of these variables so that the maximum power... Hang on a minute, let's freeze time for a second. Any time in a question we're looking for a maximum or a minimum, this is a clue that we'll need to differentiate and set that derivative equal to zero and find the corresponding value. Power is dissipated in the circuit. And as always, we're going to start our problem with something fundamental. So we know that the EMF, E, will be the sum of the voltage that's been dissipated due to internal resistance plus the voltage across the resistor. I'm gonna call the voltage across the resistor V plus using Ohm's law, this here will be equal to I times R, where I is the current, R is the internal resistance. Simply rearranging for V, we get that this here will be equal to E take away I times R. But remember the PD across this resistor will depend on the value of the resistance, which we can vary. Well, because R is equal to V over I, we can say that the resistance across it will be equal to E over I take away R. And remember, R is just equal to K times I squared, so we can just magically substitute this into those equations. Mm. The question is asking us for the value of R so that maximum power is dissipated. Well, power is just equal to the voltage divided by the current, which is just going to be a function. Well, it will just be equal to EI because this here is the voltage. Then multiply this by I as well. So that will be take away K. This will give us an I cubed, which multiplied by another I will give us I to the power of four. Anytime you read a question in which we're looking for the maximum power dissipation, this maximum here is a clue that we need to involve calculus. In order for there to be maximum power, this means that this function of I will need to have its first derivative equal to zero. This would mean that it's an inflection point. If the second derivative is smaller than zero, then we are sure that we have a maximum. Well, because the power is a function of I, let's differentiate the power with respect to I. This will just be equal to E take away 4Ki to the power of three. Now let's set its first derivative equal to zero. I'm going to find the value of i that gives us an inflection point. So e take away 4ki cubed. This would mean that 4ki cubed will be just equal to e, meaning that i will just be given by e divided by 4k and then because it's i cubed I'm going to raise this to the power of a third. And this current here will correspond to a direct value for the resistance. And how do we know that we're actually dealing with a maximum rather than a minimum? Well, the second derivative test will give me that the second derivative of the power with respect to i will just be minus 12k i squared. k will have to be a positive because this internal resistance here has to be a positive number and i squared is gonna be positive by definition. Now let's plug this value into the resistance here. We're going to find that the value of R that corresponds to a maximum will be given by E. Rather than writing over I, I'm going to write times 4K divided by E. And this one here will be raised to a power of a third. And this one here will also be raised to a power of a third. Now take away K times i squared. Okay, so this will be e to the power of 2 over 3. Divide that by 
4k all of it raised to the power of 2 over 3. And this is part of the reason why this question is so tricky under time pressure because now we're going to have to be dealing with some algebra to reach the final answer. Okay, so the resistance will be given by e over e to the power of 3 will just give me e to the power of 2 over 3 multiplied by 4k raised to the power of a third take away k e to the power of 2 over 3 and then we're going to have 4k uh, raised to the power of let's say negative 2 over 3. Okay, we have a common factor that I'm just going to take away outside of a bracket. Actually, just before I do that, I can tidy up the k on this side. So here we have k to the power of plus 1. Here we have k to the power of minus 2 over 3. So that means that overall, we're going to be left with uh, k raised to the power of a third. So this means that we can take outside of the bracket e to the power of 2 over 3 and then k to the power of a third. Now what we're left with in the brackets was, is going to be 4 raised to the power of 1 over 3 take away 4 raised to the power of minus 2 over 3. You gotta love the algebra. k r will be all of this 2 over 3 k to the power of a third third, four to the power of one over three, take away one over four to the power of two over three. Okay, now I can place those guys under a common denominator. So if I divide this by this factor, I can also multiply it by this factor here. What would that give me? Let's copy this out. So r will be 2 over 3 k to the power of a third. Then inside of the brackets, 4 to the plus third and 2 thirds. This is just equal to 4 take away 1, which is just going to be 3 over 4 to the power of 2 over 3. And this here will be equal to, let's bring the 3 out the front. Then we have e to the power of 2 over 3 k to the power of a third divide that by 4 raised to the power of 2 over 3. Now what I'm going to do is write this as 3 and then we're going to have e squared k divide that by 4 squared which is just 16 but then all of this is raised to the power of 1 over 3rd and this here is the correct answer. Now your journey to prepare for this exam will not be complete unless you have a look at yet another crucial technique that very often appears in questions for the anger and this video is right over here you need to watch it.